Welcome to How to Yu-Gi-Oh! Historic set, Gladiator's Assault. Alrighty then. And so let's talk about the set. Why is it an historic set? And why is it s this set so important to Yu-Gi-Oh! And why do I mention it? First of all, this set released on November 14th, 2007. Now, this is a significant year for Yu-Gi-Oh! As this is the year where Yu-Gi-Oh! introduced something that we know today as power creep. Coincidence, I think not. Yes, my fellow students. This is the first time power creep was introduced in Yu-Gi-Oh! And so there were certain concepts introduced. With the introduction of Gladiator Beast, three things were introduced into Yu-Gi-Oh! First of all, these were monsters that special summon themselves. Or rather, just the word special summon. It's all coming together. Indeed, before this time, special summoning was something that was applied to only on spells. For example, on Monster Reborn or Continuous Trap like Call of the Haunted. You got to remember at this time, Monster Reborn was limited. Hype equals success. Would have been banned or limited and we only had Call of the Haunted. So the ability to special summon monsters was only, special summoning was only on spells and traps. It wasn't on monsters yet. This was a whole new concept that you have to realize here. And so Gladiator Beast for the first time in Yu-Gi-Oh's history had monsters that activated effects on special summon. Even though yes they could only activate them after battle but still the abilities of special summoning themselves and activating the, the effects upon special summon was significant and extremely powerful. Facts. And not something to consider here. Second thing that was introduced as well was chaining. Chaining is an extremely important thing that did not exist at this time. You got to remember, Yu-Gi-Oh! at this time before 2007 was a very basic game that involved just I summon a monster, I attack my, my opponent, deal damage and until they have 8,000, drop them down to zero. Does not sound too bad. The most expensive card at this point in time, before this set's release, was Mirror Force, or Battle Traps rather. These were extremely expensive cards and were very good cards. Anything that destroyed a monster by battle, or anything that could protect you from battle damage, um, such sort of things, were very sought after. And the third and final thing is timing. Indeed, timing was something that was introduced with Gladiator Beast, but to Yu-Gi-Oh! as a whole. And what is timing? Timing is like the response window of effects. Before this point in time, we didn't have monster effects. They did not exist, right? Yu-Gi-Oh! was a very basic game, you have to remember, at this point in time. Before Gladiator Beast, timing did not exist in Yu-Gi-Oh! at all, because there were no so-called monster effect. Yes, we had flip effects, You can, we can say that, but again, in the competitive scene, flip effects were not really used as they were too slow. And the ones that were used were Magician of Faith that allowed you to add a spell. Again, a spell that ha would, would usually have an ability or to special summon, i.e. you would add yourself back your call, your call of the Haunted or Masa Reborn if it was still legal at this point. The point is, you only use the best ones, and even those, they didn't have any chaining or timing. So, let's rewind and go back. So, what were the three things introduced? First of all is the word special summon, and that being on monsters, instead of spells and traps. That is the first introduction into Yu-Gi-Oh! That's the first instance of power creep. The second thing is chaining. Indeed, chaining is something that did not exist in Yu-Gi-Oh! at this time, and so chaining was introduced, and we can see it with Gladiator Beast. And the third and final thing is timing. The effect, uh, how effects are utilized, how you time them. For example, with the effect of Gladiator Beast Bestiari. So you would attack with Gladiator Beast La... La Laquiari, Laquiari would activate its effect. Its effect when it's battled, successfully battled, which it does, you can shuffle it back into the deck and then special summon Bestiari. Bestiari's effect on summon, you can, allowing you to pop a spell or trap on the field. This, that whole interaction that I've just explained to you is just a simply simple version of chaining and timing. Being able to chain block and all manners of things were introduced because of Gladiator Beast. And I think that's all I've got to say. I know this has been a very long section, but do realize that Gladiator Beast is a very important set and something very important in Yu-Gi-Oh! as introduced 
as it introduced modern Yu-Gi-Oh's aesthetics into Yu-Gi-Oh today. Everything you like about Yu-Gi-Oh, all the fast-paced things about Yu-Gi-Oh, all the complex interactions, it all starts with Gladiator Beast. Okay, and so the value card is Test Tiger. Indeed, Test Tiger is the value card of this set. Remember, this is the first time we have a card that can special summon itself, right, on its own. Success comes from being the best. Usually, monsters at this point in time, when they would special summon themselves, they would need your opponent to control a monster, and you do not. So, monsters that existed were cards like Cyber Dragon, that had the Cyber, I would, well, let's call it the Cyber Dragon Clause. The, the Cyber Dragon Clause would be that they could only be special summoned if your opponent controls a monster and you did not, and then they would special summon themselves. At this point, special summoning was very special indeed. Haha, uh -huh. that was punny. And so, for the first time, having a card that could special summon itself, right, for, for almost free, indeed, you needed to control a, a gladiator beast, but the point is, that's too strong. It could special summon itself through your own interactions and you didn't need your opponent. This was something that did not exist, hence why it was a very valuable card and quite expensive. That's really convenient. You have the wild card here, Necroface. Indeed, Necroface was introduced at this time and the year prior we had Soul Absorption and Soul Absorption's effect allowing you to, whenever a card is banished, gain 500 life points. Indeed, being able to do Banish, Banish Beatdown was something that was now introduced into Yu-Gi-Oh. Indeed, as we know today, such sort of things like the ne Necrophage shenanigans and chaos, the Chaos, chaos Beatdown and all manners of things with Banish Beatdowns, we all know them today, but Necroface premiered in this set, and this was the start of of the Banish Beatdowns and all manners of things that we would see in Yu-Gi-Oh! into the future. Necroface was extremely important, it was a really nice wild card, as this just added loads of new strategies into the game, loads of which meant that you could not just die from being battled upon, as you would just raise your life points to ridiculous levels, you would literally be over 9,000. Yes, we like those references, but yeah, that's all there is to it here. Extremely important set, let's move on. So, overall, for its time period, I'm grading, this set would have been graded an A. It As for amazingly beautiful. Indeed, you have to remember, Gladiator Assault really assaulted the game. We love those puns. With a grade of A, it was a fantastic set, and and Power Creep was here at its finest. Indeed, Gladiator, Gladiator's Assault as a booster set was important for the game. As, is, as, as I've said before, it introduced chaining, timing, and essentially special, the word special summon, but now on monsters instead of them, instead of it being exclusively being on spells and traps. Indeed, just this simple inclusion of special summon being on monsters is extremely important. And while yes, special summoning was there before, right, um, this set, but it was locked. It was locked to monsters such as Cyber Dragon and, the, and I would say they had the Cyber Dragon Claws, as they could only special summon themselves if your opponent controlled the card and you did not. And so, but this was the first time of a proactive card that had special summoning that you could use and did not rely on your opponent. This, is a com this completely shifts the narrative and completely changes everything. When you don't rely on your opponent to special summon, that completely changes the game, hence why this is known is a form of power creep. Okay, and I think that's all I've got to say about this. So, as I like to say, you are one step closer to becoming a Yu-Gi-Oh! Master. My faith, right, is in your hands.